got most of the dive bomb crew here. The ugly guy in the back. I don't know. I don't know. We just picked him up on the side of the road. <laughs> but um, tell you what, we're out in Colorado and it is April. And uh, we had a little bit of work to do, so we got together and recorded a video. Uh, you know, Kyle and I are working on some waterfowl calling instructional stuff that we're going to be putting out here real soon. So um, did that, and we figured it was a great excuse to go shoot some turkeys. Yep. So we had everybody out here anyway. Cade was doing all the filming and going to edit all the stuff. So uh, now the three of us, uh, we went on an awesome, awesome turkey hunt. And just so y'all know what's going on when you're sending us DMs and sending us emails and all that, you know, hitting up customer service and all that, we're just normal guys out here living life. It's right. not just waterfowl that we love to chase. You know, we're out here and we had a heck of a time. Uh, but uh, why don't you watch here and see how the rest of this turkey hunt goes. When I found out that Cade was going to be coming out as well as Kyle, uh, I decided, as opposed to just guessing and looking at Onyx, that I would uh, take a drive, even though it's about five and a half hours each way, just to go and, and make sure that we had some turkeys in the area. Uh, you can see I found a, a road full of fresh tracks and the new mud, uh, and also uh, found a whole bunch of turkeys. guys so the first turkey we shot on over the weekend um, we actually couldn't record because there was so many turkeys that got so close to us we couldn't we were we would have been pegged um, there's about seven or eight hens that got about three to five yards uh, between us and uh, our decoys that we had out um, but you know we went off a, we went scouting Friday night four saw a long beard on this one particular piece of public uh, and then we checked out a, another one on Friday and we just kind of we weren't we were unsure what to do so we just we rolled the dice we went to where Forrest had seen a long beard before and uh, you know it was a it was a piece of public spot or it was a piece of pro public ground uh, and we're getting out of the truck and we see headlights going to a part that we were actually wanting to go to um, so we, we couldn't make a move and get to where we wanted to go, um, but we got into an area that was good. We And then all of a sudden, birds started hammering on the limb, and we before we knew it, we looked up into a tree, and it literally looked like it was decorated for Christmas, but with turkeys in it. I mean, there were turkeys everywhere in this tree. There was like three or four big, giant cottonwood trees that had turkeys all in it. Uh, and then they all hit the ground and there was four or five strutters um, and just a, a mob of hens. And um, had we been where we wanted to go, we probably would have been done, all three of us, in the first 10 minutes, right? Either that or we would have bumped them out of the tree. Yeah, yeah. or we would have yeah. moved them. And uh, it was just, it was crazy. And, and so we actually only called just a little bit and we got um, that group of seven hens to break off of that entire mob of turkeys and then slowly but surely they started working their way towards us and there was a, a a long beard that broke off of the other group of strutters that started following them up and uh these hens actually i wasn't paying attention to these hens forrest can describe it better but uh, these hens did some crazy stuff. It was wild. So, I mean, we all had guns in case there were, you know, double opportunities or something like that. But um, these hens, they, they followed the field edge and came between the decoys and us, like Kyle said. They were there at point blank range. I, I felt like I could have reached out and grabbed one. Um, but they, 
they, they, they went to those decoys and they went up to the hen and started getting aggravated and started wanting to fight it. Uh, and two hens even started kind of like half strutting. One of them went full strut, wings down, fan spread up and was just pecking the snot out of the head of this decoy. Um, it was wild. And honestly, I think that's what grabbed that gobbler's attention because yeah. as soon as that decoy started knocking, that gobbler turned and it was just that, that barrel chested sprint all the way across the field. <laughs> And uh, so I was on the far left, and this bird was coming from the left. And I asked Cade, I was like, man, you want, you want me to shoot him now, or do you want me to wait? And he goes, you do you, bro. And I don't think he got <laughs> done with bro. And it was boom, just rolled this turkey mid cannonball walk, <laughs> just had like three quarter strut, and just pounded him. He I mean, he, he, he didn't even flop. He didn't. So, he didn't. It was uh, it was just crazy. It was a it was a really cool experience. Uh, I'm I'm shooting for a single season Grand Slam, so that was number two bird uh, off the list there. Um, you got to shoot a Osceola, a Rio, a Merriam, and a Eastern, and that was my Merriam bird. So my man Forrest put us on them and we got it done. That was that was awesome. Look at this little chili, dude. <laughs> <laughs> little manly balls, huh? What a bird. Oh my gosh. Oh, kid's running. Run, Forrest, run. You little. Wow. I mean, the spurs, that's a. That's a that's beautiful. Good for you, man. Not just awful scenery either. They don't flop much, dude. I wonder if they flop it. No, they really don't flop much. High desert, Merriam Goblin. This don't get no better, bull. Not at all. So coming off the end of Kyle's hunt, um, after he shot that bird, those other strutters that um, were off to the left of us, probably, I don't know, 300 to 400 yards, they actually kept strutting. Um, they they kind of acted like it never happened and eventually made their way into the woods. And I actually got up after he shot um, to try to go make a move on those and ended up getting in the woods with them. And, uh, Never bumped them, but they flew across the river. We were right beside a river, and uh, they flew across to the other side, which it's not public on the other side, so it was pretty much over for the morning there. So we, uh, I walked back over there, and we, we tied Kyle's turkey up in the tree, and we just kind of sat there and took it in for a little while. And then uh, we ended up getting our stuff, packing out of there, went and got some lunch. Then we went and <clears throat> checked out a couple different spots um, down the road, and uh, hiked into a couple different places. And, didn't find a much sign, um, nothing really what we was looking for. So we ended up going back to the same field where Kyle had shot his bird that morning. We knew that all those 30 to 40 turkeys were roosted in that tree that night. And there was a good possibility that that whole flock was gonna come back and try to roost in that same tree. So we got in there, what, 2.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, basically knew that it was gonna be an all day deal at that point. Uh, we got in there and we took the time to brush up, uh, make a good high. We got comfortable and uh, basically what we did was we put our backs up against the roost tree and basically sat right underneath it um, with the plan of, of shooting them when they come back. And that's exactly what we did. It ended up when those turkeys flew across the river in the morning, there was a big camp. I don't even know what you big. call it. It's a bluff. A bluff. Yeah, huge like bluff. 700 feet probably. Maybe not quite. It's probably big. 500 feet. Yeah. Well, any which way, they went that way that morning when they flew across the river. Well, ended up. 
and they made their way to the top of that bluff and uh, oh, I don't know what was it about 6:45. Yeah. Um, we heard a hen and Kyle turned around he's like oh 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 don't move don't move can't get ready and so I turned around and then the old of course. 30 or 40 or however many turkeys there was we actually pitched off the top of that cliff and flew across the river and landed probably 75 behind us um, through the thicket so at this point it's like game time we go from sitting there for three hours and not seeing or hearing anything to we've got turkeys um, and we're in the ball game so we get ready and uh, we never hear them or see them again they kind of feed their way to the left of us and then we sit there for about 10 or 15 more minutes and we see another turkey um, probably four or five hundred yards down river come off the same bluff and it actually pitched off the bluff in front of us where we could see it and glided down just like he would have out of the tree but, but flew way down that canyon and came and landed in the field and Kyle saw him first right before he landed he's kind of doing the little back pedal thing and uh, he's like there's a turkey wait is that a goose no that's a turkey because <laughs> it came in like a goose I mean it came in and back pedaled and, and landed in the field put the binos on it and sure enough it's a long beard and uh, it's probably 400 at this point yelped at him a couple times he didn't show much interest he raised his head up but nothing too exciting for him so at that point we decided that um, it was just going to be a patient game we're just going to sit there we have a good feeling that he wants to come our way anyways because we're sitting under the tree that these turkeys are roosting in so um, we were patient with him and watched him feed for about an hour ended up those turkeys that flew off the cliff the big flock of them they ended up coming out to the left and there was one strutter and the rest were hens and jakes and then there's this other turkey so we got two different groups of turkeys in the field and uh, that single that you see in the video that I shot it fed its way across the field and um, probably I don't know watched it for probably an hour and he ended up getting um, inside 40 yards and the sun was going down and the turkeys are still strutting he was in shotgun range so let it rip and that was the end of that one and it rolled him up there and the other turkey kept strutting Forrest got up to try to go make a move on him uh, but they were kind of boogered at that point but when, when the big boy goes running through the woods after a flood <laughs> and there's leaves and branches it's not quiet so let's let's be real they they knew what was going on but anyways we uh we got that done right before dark and uh, that was kind of a cool situation it was not your textbook gobbling off the limb turkey hunting you know it was more so um <clears throat> killed that turkey because we had been in there previously and we knew what they had done and couple of days past and uh, basically just patterned them and uh, got where we thought they wanted to be and sure enough come in there right before dark and rolled him up and that was the end of that one what's crazy about that turkey that you shot Kate was it it literally landed about 50 yards from where I shot my turkey yeah if we had been it, sitting in that same spot he'd have been dead it, feet the it walked straight to where we were hiding and it got about five feet from where we were sitting so we could have we could have killed him 20 times over sitting where we were that morning there, it's yeah. crazy yeah. seeing those turkeys fly off of that bluff dude like it was crazy i've never seen anything like that in my life i've never hunted never turkey hunted in the west but just yeah. the terrain and the way that they use the way that turkeys use the terrain is insane you know they fed their way up there all day and then to come back down instead of walking down why not fly and it's just it's crazy. It's crazy what that terrain does to the turkeys itself. You know, like I yeah. shot, I shot a two-year-old bird that had really, really sharp yeah. spurs. These guys shot two birds that were probably a little bit older that just were. I mean, you could just tell that those canyons, those rocks, the sand, that stuff wears down those turkeys' yeah. spurs hard, hardcore. So that's the end of day one. We got two turkeys down. We got one more day to get forest on the board. Forest, how far do you think he is? Show me far. Let's go to the super far. Oh, no, I dare you, bro.
Tag, baby. April 10th. Yep. That was worth. That's all she wrote. <laughs> $156. That's the best $156 I ever spent, boy. Dude, look at that shadow. That looks like I got wings. I'm an angel. Yeah. You know, we had some hanging out with us if today panned out the way it did. 100% I agree, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh my look god! Look at all Dude. the trash, Oh. Oh my god. Ah, look at that view. Oh my gosh. It don't get no better than that, folks. Oh my gosh. So, now you can see, went really well. A uh, little bit of the backstory on that one. Uh, the day I came up here scouting, I went up and we had just gotten a snow recently and that road getting in was awful. In fact, it was so bad that when I came in the other day, I had to back down that road because I couldn't get turned around. Uh, and most of the time my truck was stuck in the, the rut on the shoulder. Um, and, and it was basically, I, I ended up backing down about three quarters of a mile of road and it was just awful. But the nice thing about that mud is I saw hundreds and hundreds of turkey tracks and it was obvious that there were birds in the area. So this was one of the places that we had talked about going initially and we had we looked at it a few times. You know, the first night we went, that was the first place we checked to see. Uh, just didn't get a good vibe. You know, it didn't seem like there were a lot of birds in the area. Um, but we went and sat up there anyway. And, and at this point, I'm stoked. I'm just happy because these two guys got their birds. And then, um, you know, to, to have those birds uh, gobble uh, right there as we were walking up the hill, we decided to park down below, hoping that they were roosted up top, knowing that if they were really roosted down below us, we weren't going to have much of a shot anyway. Um, so heard them gobble, knew we were in the game, and man, the, the rest is history. You know, we sat there for a while and um, you know, waiting on turkeys and out of nowhere a hen was sprinting down the road at us. Kyle heard the footsteps and turned his head and she saw that hit the brakes and sprinted away from us. So I was kind of thinking we were busted. Maybe she was alone. Didn't really know what, what the deal was. How many groups of turkeys are there because there's so much scrub brush around that you, you just can't see in there. Um, but wasn't, I don't know, five minutes later maybe we heard a couple bubble clucks and uh, then just, I don't know, maybe 100 yards up the road, I'm guessing, uh, around the corner where we couldn't see, that, that gobbler lit up, and the rest is history. He, he drummed his way all the way to us, and a little, little 28 gauge put the crack yeah, down on him. That drumming was loud. Oh my gosh, and he, well, he drummed straight for, I mean, every bit of a minute. Yeah. Uh, we probably heard him drum a total of 40 times there between when we first heard it uh, and when he got there and the turkeys kept coming around the corner coming around the corner and it's like one of these has got to have a red head it's yeah. gonna be strutting but when are we gonna get there and those hens came right there you saw how close they were uh, and I just felt so exposed in that aspen grove I was terrified to move um, but finally when it came down to it I, I would have liked to have stopped and, and let them get out of strut but <laughs> You know, I, I wasn't gonna risk scaring those hands, and it you just take them how you can get. That's, that's right. Sure that's sure. right. Exactly. So just kind of decided to let them have it. Another beautiful bird, tag filled. Three up, three down. That's the end of our Colorado season. If you go and if you didn't hear it in the video, rewind, turn your volume up. The four four shot. You can hear that bird drumming, fitting and drumming all the way down that road. It is really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. You might need to be in a quiet room because it's, it's just tough to record, but it it really did uh, pick up that sound pretty well. I was impressed. But, uh, man, what an awesome time. Aspen Groves and a road full of turkey tracks. Chalk full of turkey tracks. You, can't, you, couldn't, you couldn't fit another turkey track on here. Those are most of my turkey tracks I've ever seen. I wonder if there were just fewer tracks there because that face <clears throat> no, it's is, is more inclined and it dried out quicker. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. It sounded like they were roosted right up in that tall, those tall trees right back there. Yeah. They hit the ground in that little open little yeah, pasture exactly. field. By that side. Out there. Yep. Yep. And then they walk all the way up the road and then all the way down. They probably catch that uh, fence line, just run that fence line all the way down. Man, I love turkey hunting. Never gets old. 
probably have one over there. Just hear another one. Tagged out. We so couldn't face another one if we heard him. Wow. Well, at least my Colorado turkey season lasted longer than it did last year <laughs> by about 24 hours on the nose. <laughs> Some five turkeys got this thing. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Man, I could just lay here all day. Uh huh. That's the guy I'm hunting oh. with in Washington. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> give me hard turkeys. Dude, let me see that video again. If I'm getting shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't let me just grab my phone and airdrop it. Then I can sit here and watch it on my comfy spot. Yeah. But even had it gone perfectly, this morning was another one that I'll, I don't think I could forget if I tried. Mm All right, here we go. <laughs> As you can tell, that didn't suck. <laughs> Three birds in, I think we figured it out, it was 24 hours and like five or seven minutes right in there so uh that was that was pretty spectacular man Every, everything went really well um uh, i did a, a bunch of scouting beforehand and, and by a bunch right i mean off. i drove a long way from home to scout for a little while and then go back home and then we showed up you know just before sunset night before opener and uh you know we just blessed everything went the way it did honestly yeah. you know it, yeah. it, it couldn't have gone a whole lot better and we just uh just had a great time <laughs> really you just how, how could you not it was unbelievable yeah man. i it think was, uh truly unbelievable. i think we could call that the first annual dive bomb turkey hunt or something like that turkey i don't know tour. but um yeah so we're just we're just loving our off season and uh you know really there is no off season is all y'all know for anyone who really loves the outdoors it's just warmer season or colder season so Right. Threw on the t-shirts and lighter stuff and then realized it was going to be 19 degrees because we're in the mountains in the morning and then threw the coats back on. But, you know, um, it was an awesome time and to be able to share all that with each other was super special. You know, I mean, we're obviously a lot more than co-workers, yeah. you know, well, well, that's kind of where, where it all started for most of us. Um, I tell you what, the, the friendships that we've built are going to last a lifetime and it's just something that you can't replace. Those memories. I mean, whether we shot one turkey, zero turkeys, or three, it was those memories there. We're we're gonna remember for the rest of our lives, and we're gonna talk about that honestly on a probably on a hunt a hunt to hunt basis because it's gonna they're gonna be brought up. <laughs> for sure. Jokes yeah. are gonna be made uh, mainly about Cade's faces after we kill a turkey. That. <laughs> Uh, and the bicentennial stuff. That was <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah. we'll save that oh, one for yeah, for those of you we come and hunt with. Ask us about that one. Yeah. But um, yeah. gosh, no, that was that was awesome, and that's that's the truth. And I feel like everywhere we go, and whether we're hunting with just guys or outfitters or amongst ourselves, somehow if anyone's remotely interested in turkey hunting, that ends up being about a forty-five minute to an hour long conversation. Oh yeah. So, oh, just can't get enough. It doesn't get a whole lot better. And guys, thanks for coming out. 
Just thanks awesome. for bringing me. I'm glad we were able to spring something like this. And thanks for letting me invite myself. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. yeah. <laughs> he yeah. said. He said yesterday. He goes. Wait, that was the best hunt I've ever been on that I've invited myself on. <laughs> so today is Sunday, April 11th. What yeah. was it? Tuesday night, about 10:30. At night, I texted Forrest. Uh, well, I just talked to Kyle, and he said that he was coming out here to hunt with Forrest. And so I sent a text to Forrest. I was like, hey, man, uh, what are the chances if I can make it to Denver by Thursday afternoon, you'd have room for me? He's like, dude, come on. So I bought a plane ticket that night and uh, packed my bags on Wednesday and Thursday morning at 2.30. In the morning, we were in the air and headed to Denver. That, yeah. that, it didn't go that simply. No, it no, didn't go quite that simply, but that's the short version. Yeah. Almost missed my flight. Oh, um, yeah. Woke up to, to head to the airport. The truck wouldn't start. And did that whole deal. <laughs> but uh, made it here. Forced in a little bit of scouting beforehand, but we showed up on ground that none of us had ever hunted. Yeah. And, uh, and within a couple of days, we were all tagged out and headed back home and looking forward to the next day. So, yeah, that's, that's the truth. Man, I'll tell, tell you what though, it's it's a good thing you came because uh, we'll just say that Kyle and I are both still very much in the elementary stages of learning how to uh, record video and audio. Yes. So <laughs> yes. if uh, if we wanted this instructional thing to be any better than uh, just a straight up cell phone video, <laughs> I'm really glad you came. Yeah. As I'm sure you can tell, it probably feels like the Blair Witch Project as we're driving down the road, the whole, <laughs> whole phone shaking all over the place. <laughs> Oh, we just got our birds. It was awesome. Oh, wait a minute. That's the video you just watched. Yeah. Probably these guys filming. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, man, that's real stuff. It is. That's raw emotion. That's yep. nothing, nothing doctored up about that one. No, nope, that's that's the truth. And, and, and there's, there's just something special about birds in general, but, you know. Something about that wild turkey, man. Whew. It's something else. What if you're gonna have to drive to go hunt turkeys? It sure doesn't hurt looking at scenery like this. Not at all. You know, those boys in Mississippi and the Deep South got a lot of great stuff going for them. But <laughs> I think when it comes to road tripping for turkeys, uh, the West takes the cake. Yeah, turkey hunter. Thanks for watching that video. We really hope you enjoyed it. We're just out here enjoying our off season and, and you know working at the same time. And uh, man, it, it just doesn't get a whole lot better than that. If you really enjoyed it, go ahead, like it, throw any comments down there, and uh, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, and make sure to turn the alerts on so you don't miss any more videos. We'll uh, catch you next time. Have See a good you. one.